people, welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, and as always, I'm your host, Arsenio, who gives a damn, today is about my brother on the other end, this man by the name of Mustafa, you know what, I had this brother on already, you know, we talked about a lot of great things, but most specifically, or very specifically, I wanted to bring him on today because this man... As big as this man is, this guy is like the bla- the black Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you know what? He's out there in Malaysia. He's out there in Malaysia. This guy is huge. He's like he's like 20 years old. He's huge. But he ran a marathon. And he talked about, you know, doing rugby before. And he tries out a lot of things to just test himself. And I think it's just so captivated to see someone of his size and of his stature to go out there and run a marathon at about 12 to 1 a.m. And my black ass, I was worried because I was watching all his stories on Instagram. And I was like, dude, where is this guy? Where is this guy? Because after about five to ten kilometers, he looked yeah. like he was about to pass out. And I said, oh, my Yeah, God, man. <laughs> so, Mustafa, oh, man, man, thanks for coming back, man. What's going on? How are you? Yeah, I'm good, good. How about yourself, man? Oh, my God. You know me, man. I'm on the grind as usual. Yeah. Boy, I feel good as usual. So, what's hey, up, dude? Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So, I want to, of course, focus on... You know, I was looking at a lot of things you were eating before the race. Now, there might be people who are wanting to go into a marathon. I interviewed another guy named Jonathan who's going to do an ultra marathon and all these other things. And I think what you eat before the race is extremely vital. So I want you to run through that process, you know, probably, what, four to six hours before the race leading up to the race. What were you consuming? Okay, that's amazing. So for me, I have a background in in personal training. So first of all, thank, thanks for, bring, for having Absolutely. me into, into your uh, amazing show, Arsenio Buck Show. Yes, sir. Thank and, you very uh, much. And I'm, I'm glad to uh, talk to your audience and give as much value I can possibly give uh, in terms of uh, dietary, in terms of all the things that I face throughout this, this whole beautiful journey uh, of the marathon. So, okay, starting off with the diet of like, I'm just going straight to it, okay? Sure. So what I did prior was I just had to make sure that I'm not sore going into this uh, uh, to this marathon, at least uh, the last of my worries, basically. But what happened was, that was the plan. What happened was my friend told me uh, the day before the marathon, he said, uh, actually, the morning of the marathon. So the, the run was supposed to start at 1 a.m. Right. of the next day. Uh-huh. 7 a.m. the day before, what happened was my friend said, uh, let's go for a back workout. So I had to go for a back workout uh, during during the time before a day a day before uh, my marathon. So I pumped heavy weights with my man, Ibrahim, he, who's a bodybuilder. So <laughs> that was the funniest thing. And I'm, I'm carrying the weights. I'm like, I'm running a marathon. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm running a marathon. I'm not supposed to be doing this. He's like, ah, oh, come on, man. Come on. Get, get more heavyweights. And he started challenging me. I was like, oh, I'm running a marathon. And I'm, running, I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter. It's all about the mental hurdles and everything. That's cool. So I was like, okay, whatever, man. Oh. Ibrahim. But it actually, uh, it actually got me after that. I'm like, stupid. it actually got me big time. Anyways, so getting out, getting, getting through the, the whole process of the. It took me 12 hours to prepare for the marathon. Mm. 12 hours. I did not train a single bit for the marathon. The most I ever run in my life was 12 kilometers ever, ever in my life. 12 kilometers, yeah. and a full marathon is 42 kilometers. Yeah. So that's the that's the most craziest part. So I knew that. Okay. What I just needed was carbohydrates and electrolytes. That's it. You don't need any supplements. You don't need any any other things. Okay. My source of carbohydrates were oats because oats also are nutritious carbohydrates. So they have magnesium, they have sodium, they have potassium, they have they have all these iron, they have iron, they have they have all these minerals that will support the carbohydrates into your bloodstream, into your body. So your body gets happy when you eat oats, basically. But I, I could not just eat oats. I didn't like oats, basically. I I took the oats biscuits. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Oats Crunch in Malaysia here. But anything that had oat source basically in it, mm. that was my first main carbohydrate. That was my first main source of uh, energy throughout the whole run. So I did not eat much. My just All I just had to focus was to eat a lot of Oat Crunch and isotonic drinks. And the isotonic drinks were 100 plus. Um, revive, you know, those, those isotonic drinks. But I just had to make sure that they were not gassy. Otherwise, I'll be farting all, all around the run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't want that happening. So that I just, I just had to make sure it's not gassy. So there's, there's this thing in Malaysia called Hundred Plus Active, uh, but it's widely known as maybe Seven Up or or Revive. Those are all isotonic drinks. Okay. So isotonic drinks and carbohydrates. That's it. 
Oh my God. So th- that's for 12 hours leading up to the race. Yes. So nothing else except isotonic drinks and carbohydrates, which are the old crunch. I just kept on consuming them. What about your sleeping pattern? How were you able to get enough sleep in? Because your race was at what uh, time in the morning? The plan was to sleep. It was at 1 a.m. The run started at 1 a.m. 1, 1, 1 30 a.m. So the thing was, it just started one day and it finished at 8, 8 a.m. So we had to run the whole night, basically. Right. So um, the run started at 1 a.m. So the thing was, I live in another city outside of Penang. Uh, that's in Kuala Lumpur. So Penang is four hours drive from 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 uh, from Kuala Lumpur to Penang, basically. So and the race was in Penang. Yes, the race was in Penang. Whoa. So I had to call my friends. I'm like, guy, uh, I need you, man. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? I'm, I, I'm like, I just need you for a night. I don't, they don't care what you're doing the next day. I just need you for a night. He looked at me. He's like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, you paid for the car? I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay. All right, let's go. And then so we just left. He's like. He's like, okay. And then, so the thing was, I'm like, okay, what you can do is, the thing is you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, um, it's like, I was pitching to him. I was saying that you can go to the beach when you reach Penang because Penang, Penang has like amazing beaches around. So I'm like, when I'm running, you can go to the beach and see the location and everything. He's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so then we just left. Abdrahman, a man. So the plan was to sleep. I didn't sleep the whole, the whole thing. I wanted to sleep. I was too nervous, man. I was yeah, freaking I running a marathon. I yeah, I could not. I cannot yeah, sleep. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It was too. It's just too painful. And uh, me thinking about it, I was like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> I'll just think about it. Like, Ugh. You know, so that that's that's what actually got me. I got very nervous. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was it. So from the the run started at eight one thirty, and uh, it ended around eight. So I stopped the carbohydrates. I stopped taking the carbohydrates around twelve. Yeah, when we were in the car already, because we left at nine. And we arrived there pretty, uh, we arrived actually at exactly 1.30. So I just had to wear my shoes and just run off, you know. That's the thing, you know. So I just had to run my sho- wear my shoes and just run off. So what happened was I stopped taking the oats because I wanted them to digest at, at 12, 12.30. Then I just kept on drinking the isotonic drinks. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Oh, man. Okay, so you got there 30 minutes after the race started. No, we got there. We got there. Yes, 30 minutes after the race started. That's funny. So we got there at 2. So we arrived We arrived in Penang around 1.30. The cops were stopping the way. That's the thing. The cops were stopping the, 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 the location because the thing was to get to the location, it's actually one of the pathways of the runners running. So they had to uh, roadblock the location there. Wow. So we had to go around. And the guy could not explain on where the location, where we could start the run. So like, okay, whatever, man. I'm just trying to do this for myself also, you know. I'm just going to time myself. And just make sure that, you know, I get to the location and start timing myself from there. So we got to the location 30 minutes later. So we arrived there and then everybody's looking like, what is what is wrong with this guy? So the five kilometers individuals are there, uh, 10 kilometers and then a half marathon. They didn't start yet. So they're all waiting. So I just came. They were like, full marathon? So yeah. They did like this. The guy did like this to an empty, long, long highway. And I'm just looking at the highway. I'm like, this way? He's like, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> just brought my earphones. <laughs> I just looked down and I started just, just started walking one leg in front of the other. That's it. One leg in front of the other. One leg in front of the other. I'm like, this is gonna hurt. That's that's what I said. I told myself, oh, yeah. this is gonna hurt so much. It's gonna hurt so much <laughs> that like you've never experienced in your life before, ever, ever. I'm like, okay, so just put your head down and put your earphones on. I blasted like a like a hard rock rock music, Some crazy and, heavy metal stuff. Yeah, yeah, heavy metal. And then I just <laughs> it and then I'm like, all right, let's start. <laughs> then that's when it popped up my Instagram. Yeah. Okay, so 5 k.m. into the race, what was your thought process? How were you feeling? Okay, so 5 k.m. I was feeling good. Yep. I was feeling good because the carbohydrates not digest yet. So the carbohydrates like, oh, okay, beautiful, beautiful. I'm we actually using this energy. So I'm I'm I was kind of happy that my body used the energy properly. Mm. I was kind of happy that it actually worked. So what I'm telling you right now, the carbohydrate source and the isotonic drink actually worked. Mm. So I've never felt before. Usually when I was the most I've ever run is 12 kilometers. When I would reach around 12, five kilometers, I'll be dead. Like I'm just trying to push through it, you know. Yeah. But this time when I was in five kilometers, I think it's because of the mental mental barrier I had I had to myself when I was training. Mm-hmm. So this marathon, when I reached five kilometers, I didn't even realize it. Wow, yeah, there you go. I didn't even realize. I was pretty cool like along the way. I'm like, because when you see a highway in front of you, you won't even realize that you're in mid kilometer number nothing. You know, right. you're just looking at the highway and then you see the lights all the way all to the, the end, way. and then yeah. you see people coming from that light, like from that light coming back. So. 
So yeah, so I was like, okay, just put your head down, you know, just keep running. Started thinking about life, man. <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the yeah. only way. Yeah. So yeah, that was it. So that's what happened. Okay, that's what happened. And so ha- I started running. Uh, okay, five kilometers in. Okay. Uh, okay. So moving forward. So the, that's the challenges. Okay, that, where did the challenges start? Kilometer number twelve. I can I can believe. Kilometer number twelve, thirteen. I kept on running. So. The max I've ever run before was kilometer number 12. My, oh, body yep, yes. yep, yep, yep. my body recognized it. Yeah, yeah, your body recognized it. So my body recognized Said When I reached kilometer number 12, I started heavy breathing, heavy breathing. Then I saw the signboard. It says, it says, uh, it says, wait, it says 30 kilometers left and then a smile emoji. Oh, man. The emoji was like a smile emoji, 30 oh, kilometers oh, left. Ah. And I was looking. Oh, hell I like, no. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> I looked at it. I was like, Man, <laughs> I just had the mental barrier. Uh-huh. I looked around myself, and then I could just hear beautiful waves of the bridge, the 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 the, the water, nice. the bridge, hitting uh, hitting the bridge, uh-huh. and then no sound, zero cars, and then just the wind coming, wind just hitting my face and everything, and I started heavy breathing, and I started kept I kept on running, and when I kept on running, I saw the other runners coming back from the highway. Yeah. The other runners on the other side of the road, they were coming back from the highway. Okay. They were dead. They were dead. I'm like, no negativity in my life. Ah! Just, just, just focus on the on the run in front of you. That's it. Damn. So kilometer number 17, that's the first time where I stopped. Kilometer number 17, I realized that, dude, you got to walk, man. <laughs> my ankle started hurting. Oh, the biggest thing that was hurting was my ankles. My ankles started hurting. I was wearing Asics, thanks God. Highly recommended shoes. Asics, 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 really? okay. Asics, Asics. Everybody has to get an Asics. Mm. Asics is a life changing experience because I had Asics to run before because our rugby, rugby, rugby players usually buy uh, Asics to to train because we have like wide, wide foot, wide, wide uh, legs. So Asics. So I started using uh, when I reached kilometer number seventeen. That's when the pain started. Okay. So when I reached kilometer number seventeen, this is. So it's all drama moving forward, basically. Right. It's all drama moving forward. So what happened was, kilometer number 17, I took a break. And I could not even run anymore at all. Mm. I could not run. Like, my legs would not even move anymore. And David Goggins, I've, I've been reading his book. Yes. Oh, he, you got the book. What's the book? Yes, uh, I got the book. Can't hurt me. Trust me. Trust me. The book is a highly recommended book. Wow. It's a life-changing book. I finished the book in four days. Wow. Yeah, I finished the book in four days. And I would recommend it to people who I love. Trust me, if you really want to change your life, David Goggins' book can't hurt I me. Just watch it's a highly recommended book. Absolutely. So he said, he said one thing, and I can prove it because I, I got goosebumps while he was saying it, you know, because it reminded me of, of, of what happened in the marathon. So he said, our bodies, we always use our 40%. Uh, 40% of our energies or 40% of our capabilities. We never surpass that. Those th- those 40% are our governors. Those are those are our brains, basically. Mm. So there's Arsenio and then there's Arsenio Buck. Yeah. The Arsenio person would be saying that you your max would be 40% of your real self. Yeah, the 40%. So he says your mind has a tactical advantage over you, basically. Yeah. So That's he'll always tell you, Damn, you're done, you're done, you're, so, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're done, you cannot do more. You can't yeah. do more at all. At all. So just a uh, 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 senior box, you can just sit down. You can just sit down. It's okay. You're done. You're done. Just take a break and you're done. It's okay. That's the 40%. When your body reaches the extent of its believing self, its believing self, that's when you actually reach your 40%. You haven't explored the 60% ever yet. So I believe that. You know why? Because when I reached kilometer number 17, I'm like, I'm done. I sat down and I was like, wow. And then part of me was laughing. I was like, you want to run a marathon, huh? You want to laugh? You want to run a marathon? You were saying that you want to run a marathon, huh? You know how easy it is to say you want to run a marathon? You know how easy is it? Oh, my God. Then I started laughing to myself. You dumb punk ass man saying that you want to run a marathon. You know? And then I sat down. I was in so much pain. So much pain. And then I thought to myself, I was like, man, this sucks, man. And I'm seeing runners passing by. So I'm this by this time I already caught up with the runners actually. Uh, by this time people were running slower than I thought, so I was actually like pretty fast. My time was pretty good. Right. So I started seeing a lot of runners passing by, and I was sitting down and just hearing no cars, no sound, no nothing. You just hear footsteps, footsteps, and the and the water hitting hitting the bridge. Footsteps and water hitting the bridge, and the air. That's it. That's it. 
And I'm just sitting down, like thinking, I'm like, wow, this sucks. I really popped off my earphones. I'm like, oh, man, this does not help me. Give me a headache, man. Right. So I stood up and I was like, dude, you better stand up, man. You better stand up. You know, that's the only thing you can possibly do. This is literally thing. That's, that's the exact thing I told myself. And while my brain was saying, no, you're done, you're done. I'm like, just stand up, man. Just stand up. Literally, that's how it was like. I'm like, just stand up. You're the only self who can push yourself right now. Nobody else can push you right now. Absolutely. And as soon as I stood up, I started walking. I'm like, just walk. Just walk, man. Just walk. It's just walking, right? You've been walking all your life. I've been justifying to myself. You've been walking all your life. So I'm like, okay, just walk. I started walking. Then I started feeling comfortable. Like, there's this weird comfort in the pain that I was receiving. Like, I was feeling so much pain. There's this weird comfort I was getting. I don't know where was it. Then, that's when David Goggins says, when you start exploring this other 60% of yourself, is when your body gives up on you, basically. When, you're, when your mind gives up on you and now you're free to choose whatever path you choose. And I was like, whoa, man. So I started feeling this weird energy coming from nowhere. So I started running, like as if I started a marathon, some weird way. Trust me, this never I've never experienced this in my life. I started running like as if I've never run before, ever. Like I've, I've never run. I felt like a baby. This is weird. Trust me. I started running. Then I find this Chinese guy. This Chinese guy came and he did like, he, he made this gesture to me. Uh. And he was like in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, like, come on, come on, let's go. I was like, yeah, I was like, come on. I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go. You know, because that was the thing. I was a jacked guy. You know, when you see a jacked guy, like everybody's like, what the hell is this guy doing? Everybody's like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, what? You know, everybody's like this thing. So the Chinese guy was like, let's go. Because he saw my face. I was like, I was just trying to, just trying to pick up my pace. And as soon as I saw him, I'm like, okay, he's kind of going in a pace that I like. I'm like, okay, let's just keep up with him. Then we started talking in the race. Can you imagine? We started talking while running. So now I'm feeling like I've never run before and I'm having new energy. Trust me, this energy, I've never seen it before, ever. I've never felt it before. So it's kind of weird, very weird. So for 20 kilometers, we are running nonstop. Can you imagine? For 20 kilometers. For 20 kilometers, we're running nonstop and the high pace. We're passing people like this. Passing people like this, trust me. And this is the funniest thing ever I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm kind of laughing. So we spoke. I spoke to the Chinese guy. Maybe the distractions helped. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to him. We haven't conversed about life, man. So he was a carpenter. I knew that. You know, he's he he. Okay. So what he told me was he gave up on the race when he when he was there in Pyeong Marathon. When he reached kilometer number, I think fifteen, he just took an ambulance back home. So that was the year prior. Yeah. So that year, it was like his redemption because it really haunted him. He said he haunted him for one whole year. And that was that. And then we kept on running, kept on running, kept on running. I was like, man, this, this hurts, man. But the hurt was something that I could become comfortable in. Mm. You know, they say, funny is, at the end of suffering is freedom. No, at the end of suffering is receiving freedom in the suffering. Mm. Does that make sense? Right, right, right. So you're receiving freedom in the suffering. So now your, your body or your body has gave up on you. And it's not telling you anymore that to stop because it knows that you're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just telling you that, hey, uh, you're, you're just good. You know? So I kept on running, kept on running, kept on running. So I felt my ankles, but it wasn't to the extent that like my body was separated from my brain. So weird way, sure, weird way. Sure. Yep. And I kept on running, just kept on running. Yeah. And then I, could, I saw so many things. So two cool things, two yeah. biggest cool things that stood up. Because when you're running, you're just hearing, you're just, you're just hearing footsteps. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, the first one, the first one was, the first one was, I saw a guy screaming at the side over there, huh? screaming. <laughs> like, no, why? 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 I swear to God, like, as if, like, his like, parents uh, forcing him to, to do this, like, like, I, it flashed me back of my child, I don't know, I felt like, he's like, why? 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 And this is kilometer number 20, 25. 25 or something like that. So he's screaming and he's like crying. Like, why? He's crying? Why? Why? Yeah. And I'm like, you can just go home. But it's just like, maybe someone told me that if you, if you don't get your ass finishing up this marathon, like, I don't know what's going on, you know? So I was looking, I was like, I was like, huh? Well, why are you screaming? And then we kept on running. We all like got scared and, you know, and then he, he I don't know what happened. He started screaming. I think the medics came and took him. I don't know. We just left him. Okay? We kept on running. 
the biggest of the craziest thing that I've ever seen. I've never seen it in my life. And I don't even think I even I don't even think I'll ever see it in my life anymore. I don't know. This was the most craziest experience. At the midst of the suffering freedom, does that make sense? Yeah. At the midst of the suffering freedom, yeah. when I was running, there was a crazy pouring rain in front of me where I don't have any rain with me. And there's like crazy rain, like right there. We can see the rain pouring. Yeah. And it's just like when you do this, you're taking shower. It's just like when you shower, you can take shower and get off. You know what I mean? You can do this oh and take shower. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. That makes sense. Tyler. So you yeah, can I've walk in front it. and then you can get the rain and then you can get up and there's no rain. I've seen it's that. just like there was a line in the world yeah. where like there was like a ruler where there was like rain and there's no rain. Yeah. yeah and, it was, yeah. and it was strong, strong, strong rain. You know, it was a very strong rain. So I was looking, I was like, wow, I don't think I'll see this anymore in my life, you know? And we were like dry and we've seen the rain. It's not like it was coming to us. It was just there. It was just there. It's just like God telling you, I don't know. It's just like God or the world telling you that, okay, you've reached this moment of your life right. where you, you have transcended to, to another being. Yeah. So right now, welcome. And let's baptize your ability. You baptize you and your new, your new being. I don't know. I don't know. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so we were like, shit. Like, oh. Then me and the Chinese guy, we were suffering so much. So that was like, Kilometer number 30. So we're like running already. We're already running. Like I'm like used to the suffering already. I'm not just going. So I see the I see the ring and we all like, whoa. And we all like run in like Usain Bolt when he's finishing up the fin- finishing line, you know? Mm-hmm. So we all came in the ring like this. And it was like super strong ring. Two things I was worried about my phone, because yeah, my yeah. phone was <laughs> I was my phone. I was like, geez, I'm done. But I'm like, this is worth it, man. Like this experience is kind of worth it. Like you like my phone, whatever, man. I'll figure that out later. I'm just being in the moment. This is where you realize that you're in the moment, like right now. Mm. So me and the Chinese guy were like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. Then the Chinese guy was like, I was actually hoping for the rain. At kilometer oh, number 30, oh. right? You're in the rain. Oh. You're in the rain at kilometer number 30, right? 30, yes. Around kilometer okay, number 30. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So now we're in the rain. Now we're chilling. Like we're actually enjoying the rain, you know? So I did not realize one thing. Usually professional marathon runners, when, they, when rain comes down to them, their timing slows down. Their timing slows down because they're very light and the rain slows them down yeah. and their shoes become heavier. Uh-huh. I was the opposite. I was happy when the rain came, you know, because, yeah. you know, when you're running, usually if you're a normal person, when, you, when you're running, you see the rain, you kind of enjoy it, right? Uh-huh. So that's when I started seeing marathon professional runners. Uh-huh. Professional runners. I can say above average, you know, those weekend warriors, right. those runners who like run on a daily basis and all. Started seeing them. So we started running together. Right now, I'm behind, I left the pack of First, it was the obese. No, no. First, it was the disabled, and then the obese, and then the 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 the, the just average individuals, and then the above average athletic individuals. So that's where I was like right now. So I was like pretty fast. So he he told me the the, the pace he was running was he trained for the marathon. Then he looked at me. He's like, "How long did you train for this?" And then I was like, "No, no. How long did you train?" He's like, six months. I trained for six months for this marathon." He said, "He's like, I'm like really." He's like, "Yeah." I started smiling from the side of my mouth, and I was like, Ugh. "I'm like okay." I'm like, <laughs> then he asked me. Then he asked me, "How long? How long have you been training?" I'm like, "I didn't train." He's like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, why are you so fast?" And then, so the thing was, he said, "Why am I so fast?" Because he started from the beginning. And the funny part about it is, I came 30 minutes late, yeah. so I was kind of fast. I was like way faster, you know. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." Then he said, "Then he said, I'm like, how about you?" He's like, "He's like, yeah, I, I trained for this for six months." I'm like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, then he looked at me. He's like, he asked me, did you train? He's like, no. I'm like, he's like, he got shocked and he got pissed off. He's like, I'm like, what the hell? This guy did not even train. And he's like, what the hell? Like, he's just like, whatever. So we kept on running and he kept quiet for like, I think for like two kilometers. He's like pissed off. He's trying to pick up space. So I started also pick up my, picking up my, uh, my pace with him. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I don't know. Someone helps you usually yeah. if you're running with someone. Sure. Then I saw something happen. Uh, when we, he, he told me at the end, because it was the last highway yeah. and the highway was, was like, I think total of the amount of highway was like, it was like, yeah, 10 kilometers, five kilometers straight. And then five kilometers back. Sure. We're almost done. Five kilometers straight was at the end. There was a toll. There was a toll where you, where you pay the, 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 the car, the cars and everything. He told me that that's where you stopped. You know, that's where you stopped. Sorry. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. No, no, sorry. It was 15 kilometers back, and then it was five kilometers forward. 
Right, basically right, right. Okay, okay that's like 20 kilometers i think so my mistake so, so yeah. the five kilometers when he reached there he said there he said that i stopped there that's when the uh ambulance picked me up so he's like i'm, I'm here for redemption you know so that's when when i realized that okay so this is kind of possible because i still have energy stored but anyways yeah so when we reached there when we reached the when we reached the the how do you say it's when we reached the toll that's when he started picking up the pace it was like his redemption it kind of really hurt him so bad so in my mind i'm like I'm gonna regret this if I don't if I don't like finish this race. I realized that oh, whoa, we've came a long way, man. You finished, you're almost done. So might as well just finish off the race, man. Because I know things regret regret is something really big that we don't want to we don't want to get. You know, mm. so I kept running and then coming back. We're coming back, and so that's when I started dying. Like this is when I realized that oh, okay, so the sixty percent is now reduced to a lot lot less. You know? <laughs> yeah, a lot less. You know, so it was like. And now my brain was like, no, my body started to be I started getting cramps and everything. Uh, one thing that really helped was the is- isotonic drinks. They're giving on the way. So they're giving on the way and that's it. I didn't take any supplements. I didn't take anything. And that's the funny thing about it, you know. Body responds to nature better. Yeah. So uh, I started taking taking those isotonic drinks and started running. Kept up running, kept up running. Uh, and when we reached kilometer number 10, 9, 8 from 12, 12 to go, 12 to go, uh, it was really painful that I, I had to walk for like three more times, three more times. So I walked when I reached kilometer number 17, 12, the thing was the worst part was after I pushed myself so much, it's only one kilometer. Does that make sense? Then I'll see like, I'll run super hard. Then I'll see, and then I'll, get, I'll be like, I'm done. I'm sure this is like five kilometers I've run. And they're like, oh, this one <laughs> like, oh you, start, you, you got into this real where time yeah. was oh. your, oh my God. Exactly. And I'm like, oh my God. Absolutely. And I'm like, okay, it's okay. Just push. I'm like, I just push, 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 push. Then I look it up. At the end of the suffering, at the end of suffering, it's just one kilometer. I'm like, oh. So it's this amount of push you have to do 13 times to get back. Oh, man. And really suffer. So the last thing that stood out to me was, Kilometer number, the last, the last three kilometers. Uh, 39 I realized something I never realized ever. That was the last thing ever. There were professional runners coming from the back. By the way, I didn't tell you about the Kenyan runners, right? The Kenyan runners, the top 20 were all Kenyan runners. <laughs> of course, yeah. Top yeah. 20, all yeah. Kenyan runners, all of them. So when I saw them p- passing by by kilometer number 15, they were flying. These guys were flying. They're like police cars riding the bikes in front of them. And you're like flying. And I was like, oh, God bless you, man. I'm just trying to finish my race. Anyways. <laughs> so like, I just looked at them. I was like, I'm, you know, self-amusement. I was looking. I was like, wow, okay, pretty cool. Like, okay, I'm not going to I'm just going to finish my race. So getting back to the, the last the last three kilometers, professional runners, as in those supporting runners, you know, those people who come and motivate others. And they have like those individuals who have like balloons tied, uh, tied on their waist, showing other people that, you're at this time, oh, basically. You're okay. at this time, and they'll be running at a, at a pace right. where when you finish, when like I was like five, five hours thirty minutes, yeah. and they were running at five hours thirty minutes. So meaning when you reach when they reach the when they reach the end, they're gonna be done. They're gonna be like at five hours thirty minutes, basically. Yeah. So when we reached there, I kept on pushing until when we reach. Uh, how do I say this? Until when we reached towards the end, the most best part was this. The last three kilometers, they were like screaming to others, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I kept on with their pace. So they were going very fast. Yeah. And I was going fast too with them. And I was like, oh, where did this energy come from? Yeah. Where did this energy come from? I was like, wow. So towards the last three kilometers, I was sprinting. And it was like one kilometer is going, go bye, bye, bye. I'm like, after 40, after four, after 39 kilometers, that's weird. Trust oh, me. Nice. It's very weird running a marathon. That's what I'm saying. You know, when people say running a marathon is just like very painful, I'm like, huh. You just get different energy sources from different ways. Yeah, so yeah, different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why when I, when people ask, like, you run a marathon, I'm like, yeah, I run a marathon, but I kind of, not in the way how you think, basically. Right, right, right. You know? So, because I was getting, I was getting a lot of different energy sources. So towards the last few kilometers, we finished up sprinting. So the last one kilometers, I was sprinting. Uh, I was like, where did this energy come from also? You know, where did this energy come from? Maybe my body transferred energy to some weird, I don't know. So towards the end, and the best part was I saw the sun, the sun rise in front of me. That's pretty cool also. So it was like five hours, 30 minutes I finished. Minus the 30 minutes I came late. So I finished in five hours, basically. A full marathon. Yeah, that was it. 
That was it. <laughs> and that was the journey of so many things. What did you learn? What did you okay, learn about yourself? Yes. Um, I learned I – learned, the biggest thing I learned, the first one was push yourself, man. If you think that you've pushed yourself, you haven't pushed yourself at all. Mm-hmm. If you think that you've pushed yourself, you only need 40%. Yeah, like the maximum you think. You only need 40%. You have 60 more. You have a lot more. Trust me. You have a lot more. And then the second thing was um, – Pain is just subjective. Pain is subjective. Yeah. Pain is very subjective. That's why Gary Vee talks a lot about perspective. Yeah. When you're hurting in this area of your life, when you're alive, first of all. Second of all, second of all look, you have to be gratitude of so many other things. Your, your family is still alive. Your health is okay. Not because of just one single thing dominating your whole life. Mm. Your emotional life is now, you have empowered other people's weaknesses to guide your emotional life, basically. Yeah. So that's one thing, you know. That. might as well empower yourself for that right you know because sometimes we we do that we think our whole life is just like a, around one one person's weakness mm. and that's also another perspective um uh, yeah the third one is freaking train for a marathon man train for a freaking marathon well, but the thing is you didn't train for a marathon so how did you, how were you that's able yeah train for a marathon but i'll tell you one thing also another truth another insight was i don't know because every time i would run I'd really suffer for the next week. Does that make sense? I'll be like very sore for the next week and I'll still have to go to the gym and like I will not recover. And I'm always like very fatigued every time I'm in class or every time I'm I'm teaching my clients, I'm like very fatigued. I'm very tired. So I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. I might, I might have to figure out on the way how I'll have to train for that. The next one, I'm actually running another marathon, bro. Ultra marathon. What do you think about that? bro? 100 miles. Hey, what do you come, think about that, bro? Come on, man. Are you sure? I'm kind of getting goosebumps telling you that. But yeah. <laughs> You're going to do a freaking ultra. I was just thinking about that because the guy that I actually knew before, um, he did an ultra and a guy died. Yeah, that's no joke. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, I ain't saying nothing. You know, Mustafa, I ain't saying nothing. I'm just saying, man. Ultra marathon. No, no. I've seen, I've seen three guys die also. On the marathon yeah. race? Yeah. In a in a in a in a in a in a ultra marathon. Wow. I've never seen it, but I I know I know like people die out of these things. But I just I just also dude, it makes you very curious when you realize that you've just reached forty percent of your energy. Uh, it makes you realize that you have a lot more, trust me. And in that pain, you receive freedom from pain. You receive pain, but realizing that it's actually freedom in that pain, right. whew, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, trust me. Because you start receiving energy sources that you never received before, and you start thinking to yourself that, have you ever really pushed yourself to a limit? Is there actually a limit to yourself? And that's when the question starts coming. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, whoa, if you can run that speed at the last three kilometers, yeah. what have you been doing this whole time? You know? Yeah. So I'm the, just sitting down like, whoa. When is the ultra for you? Huh? When is the ultra? What are you going to do the ultra? I gotta train for that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna train okay, for that, okay. man. I'm just kidding. Don't, I don't train get for crazy. That. But, and, uh, uh, but I did invite you just before the show to do this Spartan mm-hmm. race with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of right now. And it's 10 kilometers. It's, it's what, 13? 13. 13 kilometers. And the thing is, the, the things that affect you the most is, of course, the, the bucket carrying with the rocks uh, and the uh, sandbag. But the uh, thing is, you got, like, muscles on top of muscles on top yeah, of muscles on yeah. top of muscles. So, you know what I'm saying? You can just carry that with, you, you know, just probably a couple of fingers. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, like, no, like, man. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I do realize one thing. Also, yeah. it changed my perspective on fitness also, by the way. Yeah. It changed my perspective on fitness a lot. That's why when I go to the gym right now, I just train for strength. I don't train to, like, okay, looking good is just, like, a byproduct. I don't see it as the main product, basically. Sure. Looking good is there. Because I realized that it's much more beautiful when you have a person beautiful inside, mm. you know, than, than just like the outer aspect, you know? Absolutely. And I think a lot it of people... just, it, it just creates an energy when you see a person going through a lot of suffering in their life yeah. and they've overcome that suffering and you see this energy that emits from their eyes. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. But I just, when you've seen a person who has gone through a lot of suffering, but now is happy and that kind of happiness is different. Like you see that feeling that, that she's, that you, you know, I don't know. I just see this kind of energy that I receive, you know. That's why when people respect a lot of bodybuilders, it's not because, it's not really because when a bodybuilder enters a room and everybody just like, just like goes silent. Or everybody just goes like, no, you know, they just like, the beast is here. Why? Because he's gone through a lot of suffering. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's gone through a lot of suffering. And right now, 
people respect his suffering and his consistency, not because of his body. Yeah. Not people get intimidated. It's because people respect the amount of suffering he's gone through. Uh, so I think not because, you know, I just believe that beauty is in, 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 it's, it's inside you. You know, it's not, it's not more of the outer aspect of it, you know. Right. That's why I wear big shirts around campus. Right. Pretty cool. Anyways, yeah. Wow, Mustafa, man, that was, uh, I would ask you a couple of more questions, but of course I'll be bringing you on again at the beginning of the year and whatnot. Uh, it, it's just you continue to push yourself. You went from rugby, you did this marathon, you saw so many people, you saw someone give up because you saw, well, I'm guessing that's what it was because, again, he was screaming at the top of his lungs and whatnot. And, I mean, you saw all of these things take place, but then you were able to gather up so much energy, and there were so many different energy sources. So, man, I mean, it's just remarkable what has happened, um, what has happened to you over the amount of, um, yeah, the marathon and what you continue to push yourself towards. So, again, guys, um, it looks like the, what is it, the recording just went haywire. I don't know what happened. So, let's see for... (laughs) So, guys, if you've actually joined me on this uh, journey, I don't know what happened to Mustafa. It's funny that he just finished talking and then the internet just went down. But, again, guys, if you like this episode, I'm going to make sure I put all Mustafa's links in the description for you guys. And I think Mustafa is gone. This internet has gone, everyone. So, yeah, I apologize for that. But you know what? Luckily, we finished. It didn't happen midway through. So, again, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Um... Another remarkable story. We're going to put all of that in the description. I'm going to make sure that I get this guy to do, again, the Spartan Super out there in Malaysia, March 2nd. And you guys should stay tuned for that. And as always, I'm so grateful for all of you. And thanks, Mustafa, if you don't even hear me, (laughs) for tuning in. And uh, guys, stay tuned for more interviews, man. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual. Over and out.